Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Pro Wrestling Magic Presents. We will rock you. We are live out there on Facebook, and we are live and in your face right now from the Pro Wrestling Magic Kingdom. My name is Jimmy Riot, and as always, I am joined by Mark Williams. Wonderful to be back here, Jimmy. Looking forward to the action starting hot right now with these two big tag teams. Absolutely, and if you've been paying close attention to our social media, you saw that we had a bite of the apple last month from Matt McIntosh, and he described how he hasn't he hasn't had a chance to really be a part of the, the title scene even though he's in the title scene no matter where else he goes. The American Motor Society took a little bit of a umbrage with that and they demanded that he choose a, uh, a team member to go in against them. And I think that Matt chose pretty well. That's right, both very similar styles with uh, Matt and Killian together. Uh, Matt did make a great point. He's a champion wherever he goes here in the, the, the Northeast section of independent wrestling, except for here in Pro Wrestling Magic. Uh, AMS took great offense to when Matt tried calling his shot and saying that he should be a tag team champion. Well, title shots aren't handed out so easily around here. You've got to earn it. Well, as you saw there in the early going, Killy McMurphy uh, getting a little uh, sidetracked there getting, as he's getting used to being back inside the pro wrestling magic ring. It's been a little while there for young Mr. McMurphy, but he's just seeming to find his sea legs pretty well. And here comes the Bad Apple facing off one-on-one -on -one with relentless Aaron Bradley. Go behind, missing the collar and elbow tie up. Relentless Aaron Bradley now getting wrist control there. Deep hammer lock. Matt McIntosh having none of that though. Trying to get that neck. Load over into the headlock. McMurphy taught him that headlock, he's telling us. Twice he taught it to him. Thumbs up, buddy, thumbs up. Very interesting seeing Matt McIntosh here in a tag team. We've seen him. Oh, hold on a couple of ones. Oh, just a one and a half count there. Well, we, we've seen him a lot more in singles competition, but here we have him in a tag team. Jimmy, what do you think that does to his mindset here as he's, as he's tried numerous times for singles goal? Now he's making a, a bit of a pivot for tag team. What sort of adjustment is he making here? Well, as, as was mentioned, he does train with Killian McMurphy quite frequently, so these two definitely have the, uh, the edge as far as preparedness. One, two, just a two count there again as they roll up in the center of the ring. As I was saying, ooh, big time knee shot directly under the nose from relentless Aaron Bradley now. Up and over he goes. Matt McIntosh floating back in, but nothing doing. Um, but uh, they, they don't team together uh, very often, especially inside the walls of the kingdom here. And um, it could be interesting against the way more seasoned, the way more um, compatible American Murder Society. They've had multiple tag team title reigns just recently, losing their titles to the uh, Jersey Muscle Society, who we'll see here in action tonight. But we'll put an asterisk next to that, we'll explain later. Absolutely. As, uh, as we see Aaron Bradley now still trying to gain control over Matt McIntosh. Matt McIntosh not able to get to the corner. Big time elbow right to the side of the head of Aaron Bradley. Here comes the shooter. Shooter got him. Oh, but just tossed. And now here comes the Maniac Unchained. Steve off. Big clothesline taking down the shooter. Aaron Bradley showing why he is relentless. Big time kick under the jaw. American Murder Society is rolling here in the early going. Well, he's Matt McIntosh buying his tag team partner the next second or two here, and that's why. Big time double chop. Knocking down the Maniac Unchained. The shooter is rolling now. Go for a cover. One, two. Just barely a two count, says Ryan, Ryan T, our referee, in our opening contest here at Pro Wrestling Magic. We will rock you. It seems that the shooter has found his target that he is going to just zone in on, and that means that the Maniac Unchained is in a lot of bit of trouble right now, Mark. That's right, and the referee Ryan T is distracted right now. Uh, Killian going for the nose there in that uh, in that choke. Yeah, absolutely. Just not only focusing on under the chin, but he's focusing on stretching out the nose, making it as uncomfortable as humanly possible while he's in that hole. Great job isolating Steve off here now that Matt McIntosh is back in the ring to pick up on the offense. And not what I was expecting to see this early on into the match where Killian McMurphy and Matt McIntosh are the ones cutting the ring in half here. You said to yourself, these guys have, have teamed before, just not necessarily here at Pro Wrestling Magic. They're not as much of a known quantity here, but they've been able to hold their skills elsewhere. What an hold up. Sorry to interrupt you there, Mark, but what an absolute thunderous right hand and a back elbow from Matt McIntosh. And again, again, Aaron Bradley 
unable to control his anger, and Steve Off is now isolated in that corner. They're just having their way with Steve Off right now. Killian McMurphy really zoning in on those legs. Uh, sorry, those arms there, as uh, uh, Matt McIntosh is using his legs to kick the back of Steve Off as he's down on the ground. I think also in here who was so focused on Aaron Bradley staying in the ring that he didn't notice the illegal double teaming going on. That's, uh, th I mean, I guess that's going to be the uh, the short flyer way to make sure that they come away with the victory here. They're going to try and make sure Aaron Bradley loses his temper a lot so they can try and sneak in. Going for that arm bar there, but immediately Steve Off knowing exactly where he was in the ring. That ring generalship right there. An odd tag there onto the foot. Oh my! The point of his knee just coming down across the shoulder and possibly the elbow. Really gonna separate that arm if they keep that up. We know McIntosh in the singles competition here. He's a great striker. He knows where to hit to make the most impact. Absolutely. Head by oh, Matt McIntosh. Wow, just knocked him out here. They're in trouble, but McIntosh has to get on top of him here. Keep him grounded with those knee strikes. And on the anniversary of Halloween Havoc, a Eddie Guerrero inspired move there by Mr. McIntosh across the eyes. Matt McIntosh now digging that knee into the upper part of the spine, just under the just under the back of the neck as he yanks back on the chin of Steve Off. Fans getting behind AMS here now. Steve Off battling his way out with that jawbreaker. Matt McIntosh, nobody home for the close Steve Off able to hit him with one. Can Steve Off make it to his corner? He's practically right there. He's just got to reach up and get that tag. He's struggling right now, having his arms attacked for the last several minutes. Absolutely. He's, He's headed towards to the wrong corner. corner. He's got to get to that corner. Matt McIntosh now, though. But here comes the relentless Aaron Bradley, ducking under a right hand for the bad apple. Bradley really feeling it now while he's on a roll here, ladies and gentlemen. Backbreaker! Neckbreaker! Oh my goodness! That's why they call him Relentless, Mark. Great move, but not quite enough to keep McMurphy down. That's why they call him the shooter. He's not letting up. Over the top rope to the outside, banging his knees on the edge of the ropes, that, on the edge of the ring there. Uh-oh. Aaron Bradley tuning up the band. Here he goes! Top oh, oh no! The shooter with that dynamite right hand! Oh, Killian Ward, a man, that's smart strategy. Great tag team work by these guys. That right hand coming all the way out of old Dublin. Oh no! Uh oh, uh oh! On the outside, possibly going for a suplex, but no! Oh. Aaron Bradley, my goodness! Spine first on the on the ring apron, the hardest part of the ring. Steve Off tuned it up, but McIntosh with the super kick! Aaron Bradley going to defend his partner, but a German suplex release from the shooter! Is this their time? McIntosh getting whipped, reverses into Bradley. Here comes McIntosh, still in Zaguri in the corner. Great tandem offense here. Up and over. Belly to belly overhead suplex. See, that's one of the strengths as Steve Off breaks up the tag there. Big knee to the side of the face of Steve Off from Matt McIntosh. I was going to say that is one of the strengths that we've yet to talk about from Killian McMurphy there. And his Not only are his strikes very, very important, but he also has a wide array of suplexes that he can hit you with from almost any angle. That's right. He and McIntosh complement each other very well. Both very similar styles of wrestling. But They're very efficient. Working together well, AMS with a double team maneuver. One, two, and three, the American Murder Society. Okay, introducing the first challenger. He is just outside the ring this moment. Hailing from the South Bronx and weighing 187 pounds. He is one half of Murder by Kicks. King Capofelli, Matt Travis! Secondly, he is fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, and weighing at 190 pounds. He is the Windy City Kid, over 
third time, T.J. Crawford. Third, he is fighting out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and weighing in at 200 pounds even. He is the American attraction, the Steel City Suplex Machine, and the 2018 Pro Wrestling Magic holder of the Keys to the Kingdom, the one M V Young. <laughs> he is fighting out of the south side of Brooklyn and weighing at 195 pounds. This is the Brooklyn Outlaw, Mike Tarver. In the corner to my left, he is fighting out of Miami, Florida, and weighing at 140 pounds. He is the current wrestling has a tomorrow heavyweight champion. He is truly blessed. K. C. Navarro. And finally, fighting out of Hollywood, California. 55 pounds. He is the Pro Wrestling Magic Junior Heavyweight Champion, the Lit Superstar, the Chosen One, Sebastian Kings! sounds and we are on in our second Facebook Live match of the evening. We have a six-way scramble match for the Pro Wrestling Magic Junior Heavyweight Championship. Sebastian Cage defending against Matt Travis, Mike Donovan, MV Young, Casey Navarro, and overtime TJ Crawford. What an incredible amount of talent in one ring at one time. Six of the best and brightest. Tempers flaring in the early going as TJ misses with the super kick and gets a German suplex, but MV catches an incredible kick to the side of that from Casey Navarro. Matt Travis claiming he's the real deal with those kicks, but Mike Donovan saying no sir with that big bicycle kick under the jaw. Now the champ and one of the challengers face to face. Here they go, a little do -si do leapfrog action. Oh, missing with the kick, missing with the shooting star press. Here comes Cage, and there he goes, whooping over. Kick to the side oh. of the head, catching him with the knee and the jaw. Oh. Unbelievable head scissors takeover from the junior heavyweight champion of the world. That's why he's the champ. Oh, five other men are on the outside. That's trouble for them. Oh boy, things are about to get pretty lit in here, I'm thinking. Where's he gonna look for? Up and, wait a second. Oh. TJ going in for something, looked like he hit with a Pele kick to the back. Up and oh! With the leg down on top of his opponents. Landed a little hard right. there on the apron. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective, taking the other guys down. But still alone inside the ring is the junior heavyweight champion, Sebastian Cage. I think things are about to get a little lit in here. Here he goes up and springboard off the top. Oh! Moonsault from the top to the outside. That was lit, Mark. That's why he's the champ. But wait a second, sliding back into the ring. Uh oh, Navarro and Sebastian Cage. This is a, a match I've been looking forward to for a long time. Neither men strangers around here in the kingdom. Memory serves. These two men were both involved in the junior heavyweight tournament to crown the first champion. Sebastian Cage obviously coming out the first champion in that tournament late last year. Here he goes up and over. A lot of do -si do moving around, up and over, springboard over, low bridge. Oh, flipping the bird to the champion is the white.
light heavyweight champion. Here comes MV Young, kick to the center of the stomach. And a big sit-out powerbomb from MV Young to the champ. Matt Travis with a low rent super kick to the jaw. We got some teamwork developing here in the early part of the match. Well, as you know, in these big multi-man situations, you're going to see a lot of odd combinations, strange bedfellows as it were. But we know Matt Travis last month made an impact here when he jumped Pinky Sanchez. He's putting Pro Wrestling Magic roster on, on notice well, here. I, I, I'm sorry to stop you there, but Matt Travis' gun fell out of his mouth and he put it back into his mouth after it hit the mat. Matt Travis is fucking disgusting. And I'm, disgusting. I'm gonna stand by those words. I'm that gonna is. stand by those words. But probably not the most disgusting thing we'll see all night. And what an incredible sling blade DDT combination from KC fucking Navarro! Matt Travis ending up in the front row! Oh, what a knee! Time is back! Unbelievable rising knee! Not to be stopped though! KC Navarro with a couple of palm shots to the center of the stomach! And finding his way to the hammock that is the second and top rope there. Tripping, tripping him into the center rope. Up and over. Drop kick into the face is Casey Navarro to overtime TJ Crawford. Here comes Casey. Nobody home, TJ up and over. Jawbreaker. Insiguri into the corner. Snapping and rolling through with his opponent. Big time lariat. Overtime taking it to the three point line. But here comes Mike Donovan. Brooklyn Brawler. Face buster in the center of the ring. Ooh, what a knee to the chin of Sebastian Cage coming off the ropes. Up and up. Oh, seemed like he was going for like a fisherman buster, but Sebastian Cage having none of that. Nobody home for the champ. Here comes Mike Donovan. Running elbow strike and another one. Knee strike to the face. Here comes Donovan with a big cross body down onto the bottom rope. Not to be denied though is the one MV on half and half. Power bomb combination as my arms go up in complete oh, what confusion. MV Young continuing to change the game right in front of us. All these men just emptying the tank here in the early part of the match. Big move after big move. Uh, up onto the top, on the shoulder. Oh, satellite DDT from Casey Navarro. Right on the top of his head. Tremendous pivot there. Unbelievable action. The, what's really going to separate the men from the boys on this one, Mark, is who can not only do all of these high impact moves, but who can stretch a few together and get that pinfall. It is one fall to a finish. That's right. Big time chop. But sometimes it doesn't necessarily take high flying moves. You see that here with Matt Travis. He just comes at you with chops and strikes. MDK all day from Matt Travis with these gigantic chops, but Casey Navarro saying, hit me like a man, getting what he, getting what he asked for here. Sending out those elbow strikes though is Casey Navarro, not to be denied. He's fired up, demanding that Travis hit him back in return. Kick, but no, oh! from Matt Travis. I don't think we've seen one pinfall yet. No, not yet. We're about to, though. One, two. Oh. Referee Gante says only dos. Going for another pinfall. Trying to drain the tank of all the members of the ring there. Two's all around the ring. That's three in a row. I think he got a six. He's going to have to work harder if he wants to keep any of these guys down. Not endearing himself to the kingdom here is Matt Travis. Well, as you saw just a couple of months ago, he ran in and attacked Pinky Sanchez, found his way into a pro wrestling match, a World Heavyweight Championship title match with Sebastian Cage, also in that match. So Sebastian and, and Matt Travis, a lot of ground to cover here, a lot of history between these two men. We thought making an impact here, his first two months of pro wrestling magic, he's going for two of our top singles titles. 
we may not like him personally, but very effective in his career early on is Matt Travis. Matt Travis on the top saying he was going for a shooting star. On to who would be my question. But here comes overtime TJ Crawford possibly setting up for a, a superflex maybe. Oh. But having none of that going to those injured ribs is Casey Navarro. We have a bit of a confusion happening. Things are breaking down. On the top rope as they're all as they're all brawling here with one another. MV Young and Mike Donovan though getting both of those men into the electric chair position. Wait, we might have a chicken fight on our hands! No water required, Mark! Chicken fight! Chicken, chicken fight! Chicken fight! But a second here! Oh my! Two poison ranas! Not maybe going exactly to, to plan, but that was just dangerous, messy, but delicious all at the same time, Mark. It's all about being in the right place at the right time. Unfortunately, Matt Travis now being handled by Sebastian Cage. Walking the ropes a little bit, and oh! Canadian Destroyer! I'm sorry, the Dominican this Destroyer to too! Oh, you got him! And the gong sounds, and we are on four corners of elimination Baby. Starting things off is El Louis Lindo making his pro wrestling magic debut here inside the kingdom and Dan Gallagher deciding to uh, deciding that discretion is the better part of valor and does a pretty rough tag to Boom Harden. Looks like the Fed needs to spend a little more time strategizing. Boss Dog bringing in a new, uh, bringing in a new partner. Uh, this time expanding around. the menu. Absolutely. You can't, you can't just do one thing. <laughs> Louis Lindo with the wrist control on the boom hard and boom spinning out of it though. Really just wrenching in, trying to just rip that wrist right off of his body. I've got to say, the Fortnite Horseman last month really impressed me. I look forward to seeing him a lot more often here in the kingdom. Absolutely, both of those men. Very, very athletic, very, very dangerous. And we're going to see that, I'm assuming, as we go forward in this match. We're also probably going to see some flossing, and I'll be honest, I'm not really down with that. I don't get what the kids are doing these days. I don't pretend to understand it either with their rock'em sock'em robots and their MTC. I'll never understand it. Quick pin there. Oh, here we go. Oh, up and over with the arm drag. Scoundrels on in, but to no avail. Headlock now center of the ring. Lindo with a grande sized headlock. Certified badass himself. Up and over goes Boom Harden though. Same thing for Lindo. Leave the luchador himself. Starts to move. Once he starts moving, he just ain't stopping until he gets that single leg drop kick from Boom Harden. Lucky wanted in, the scoundrels wanted in. We haven't seen them inside the kingdom for quite a while. Here comes the partner though. Up. There we go. And there he, and there he goes. Out under the ring. Under the bottom rope outside of the ring. Great control by Leo Lindo early. Lindo goes out and takes out both of the scoundrels into the front row. Fortnite horsemen, look, they want to get in on the action here. Lindo now. Hold on. And a chop reverberating through the Magic Kingdom from Lindo, who gets thrown back in the ring. One, two. Two, says referee Higante. Atlantic City Scoundrels need to use their size advantage here in this match. They're the biggest team in this match by, by far. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And that could be a game changer. That's a great way to stop another team's offense. Just use your size and your power. Absolutely. You're not gonna, you're not gonna want to give any one of these teams even a second to rest. The Fed hasn't even gotten up out of their seats from ringside yet. No, they are content to watch, of course, picking their spots. Second here, what's this now? Oh my goodness! Great innovative offense. Jawbreaker onto the shoulder. Like I said, power and size advantage here. Lackadaisical cover though. Hot Dog there to break it up. The boss dog not having any of that shit inside of his ring. Now, this is an elimination style match, so nobody needs to run in to help an opponent avert the pinfall situation. Absolutely. That it also might be why the Fed are taking their time outside the ring. That is smart scat strategy, even though there are a couple of a-holes. They're from Philly, what can you expect? They're not even qualified to paint my house. Well, yeah. I've, I lived near Philly for a long time. We're pretty much right, yeah. The, the dirt worst. Big round table clothesline from El Luis Lindo, the lethal luchador. Here comes JJ Adams, the floss god. Catches the foot, it's a curry. Lost God might need to see a dentist after that one. Nobody home for the bicycle kick. Oh! Small time pie, uh, power bomb. Rolling through to the outside. What is going on here? Dangerous place to be in in the arms of a big man. Wait a second. Slam, but what do you even say to that? Oh my god, there is no stopping the scoundrels right now. Here comes JJ Adams. Up and for nothing. Just rolling through and destroying the neck. Big time DDT. One, two, three. The scoundrels are eliminated. Well, there goes my theory, the two biggest guys in the match get up first. The scoundrels have been ready. Three teams remain. Now the Fed is in the ring, finally. They're picking their spots out, the big team's eliminated. Can't say I disagree with the, uh, the strategy, though. Double bicycle kicks. Into the corner on Hot Dog from the Fed. Elbow shot to Lindo from Dan Gallagher in the corner. Super kick! Here comes Dan Gallagher! Feet of fury, arms of, I don't know, agony? My goodness, just round and round they go. There they stop. Nobody knows for sure. Out goes the boss god. Bicycle kick. They're having their way with the other teams in the match here. Things have come to a bit of a standstill. Hot Dog trying to fight his way out of the corner, but to no avail. Both members of the Fed just absolutely dismantling the boss dog. Super kick to the back. Ripcord. Knee strike. Up and big time neck breaker. Dan Gallagher up to the top rope. Double stomp. One, two, three. The wow. Fed have eliminated. The Lindo Lunchbox have been eliminated. Lindo Lunchbox. Lindo Lunchables, rather, has been eliminated. The Fed made easy work of those guys. Yeah. I well, think they're the, the, the crowd's a little shocked here. They're the freshest team in the ring. Make sure. Oh my! When you can make sure that you're the freshest people in an elimination match, you gotta take that opportunity when you can. Not that I necessarily agree with the way that they're going about it. It's getting results. Violence party from Boone Harden. Kick to the arm. 
two teams remaining here. Big rising knee strike. Backcracker! Double oh. stomp! Boom! Harden in trouble! One, two, three! and a half, says referee Gigante. Thanks to Boone Martin on that one. Here comes JJ Adams up and over. Running start, clothesline. Knocking down Dan Gallagher. Another clothesline. Big back elbow. Drop kick on the money. Flosscott is feeling it now. Up and over. Kick to the side of the face with the, the toe. That's got to hurt. Rolling through. Destroyer! Yeah. Yeah. Boom Harden now with the ripcord back elbow into a scoop slam, maybe? No! They've got him isolated in the ring, this is trouble. Fortnite Horseman! Fortnite Spike Pile Driver in the center of the ring! One, two, three! Oh! Dan Gallagher not able to break up the pin! In the corner to my right, she is from Toledo, Ohio. She is a plus size pan breeder. She is thick, she likes him. The new gold standard. She is cute in the face and thick in the waist. <laughs> Wanting to start this match off hot, Ariel and Nick's going right through the ropes there to uh, put a stop to that. Absolutely, and Mark, uh, I, I saw you enjoying the entrance of one Faye Jackson. So I'm gonna have to remind you, uh, hands where I can see hands. Them. Hands are still on the table. I did bring a pen with me so to keep my hands open and honest. All right, damn right. But I'm happy to see Faye Jackson back here in the kingdom. Shoulder tackle takes the champion down. In the early going here, Faye Jackson getting going in a big bad way. Full head of steam. Ooh, backing it up. Here we go. Nobody home for the challenger. Ariela Nix likes to wrestle. Sorry, Jimmy. She likes to wrestle at her own pace. That's one constant she's had since winning the Pro Wrestling Magic Women's Championship. Oh, Lil Jackson catching off guard there. A little bit of a rear view there for Miss Nix as she gets bumped to the outside of the ring. Standing tall though, Faye Jackson waiting for the champion to get back in the ring so she can finish the job. As Ariella said it was said in her intro, she has defeated Faye Jackson before. That's right, not it's not Faye Jackson's first time challenging for the title. I'm hoping she has enough to put the pieces together and get a victory here. But like I said, Ariel and Nix want to wrestle her style. That includes roping Faye Jackson back into the ring to get some cheap shots across the back of the neck. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ariella now introducing Faye Jackson to a friend of hers in the corner named Turnbuckle. Big boot just right into the throat. Referee Billy Bob making sure we keep that count going. 
big kick to the spine as Ariel Nix trying to hold on to that Pro Wrestling Magic Women's World Title. Well, that also includes keeping Faye Jackson ground like the smart move, although Faye does not spend very long down on the mat. Absolutely, yeah. and you don't want to let Faye Jackson get going. Once that locomotive leaves the station, it's hard to get her to stop. Absolutely. Spin through, neck breaker from the champion. Challenger two count. Two, says referee Billy Bob. Both women trying to get to their feet now after a brief exchange. Nick's just absorbing the blow there. And Jackson trying her best to fight the champion off. Face first into the turnbuckle. Ariel and Nick's now finding herself firmly in the driver's seat. Dragging J Jackson back out to the center of the ring, trying for a vertical suplex here, but no! The challenger with a fisherman suplex beautifully executed. Faye Jackson only getting a two count. Well done, take her by surprise. That could have easily been a three count. Absolutely. Here comes Jackson! Ariella just remains one step ahead regardless of where she is in the match. Jackson's jaw just bouncing off of the second turnbuckle there. But the power advantage lies in Jackson's camp right here, right now. Ariella trying to fight her out. That Irish whip reversal into the corner. Here comes Faye Jackson. Full head of steam, elbow right under the jaw of the champion. And another splash. Ariella down and where maybe she doesn't want to be in. Oh! Bouncing her head off of her backside. I want to see that one more time. Nobody home again though, because Ariella saw the milkshake getting brought into the yard. Uh oh. Checked her with her, with her body, just threw herself in front of Ariella Nix, only for a two count. Using that those powerful legs of hers to drag Ariella Nix down to the mat. Ariella Nix saying she beat her already. She's done. She's she hasn't been able to get off on the right foot, and she's done. She's, now she's saying that she's done. Remember, if she gets counted out, she retains the title here. I don't, I don't get this at all. by Jackson. Here comes Faye Jackson though. Back into the ring. Nick's thrown through a loop here. Ducking the clothesline. Kick upside the head from Nix. Tilt around, nobody home. Spear! Nick Spear! One, two, and hey! Faye Jackson did it! You're the champion! Steve Curry on ECW 
champion. It was myself and two other individuals that trained under him who had the privilege of doing that. And I got to learn from not only him, but um, guys like Jay Lethal, CM Punk, uh, Homicide, Terry Funk, Shane got go on and on. Two great people, really, really great guys. And uh, it's funny, out of the three people, Steve and two other people, I'm pretty much over left standing, uh, Steve's on to doing bigger and better things as a producer from the WWE. Uh, the, the other trainee, uh, Alex Law, left to pursue um, a career in music. And Ricky Landell left to pursue my ex wife, and that's his story for <laughs> That's a story for our podcast, but uh, anyway, you know, we, we all took different paths, and when I, when I was when I was finally getting my, my shot out in, in uh, 2007, I, I was in an unfortunate accident in the rain, but um, we all know what we do, it's going to be tough, and it was a box spot, my, my neck went sideways, I was all feeling in the uh, one side of the body, and um, pretty much was told then that, you know, this is it, you can't get this over I'm like, you know, I got too much to prove, I got too much to do, I, I, I got to persevere and push on. Um, so I tried, and during that time period, because of the injury, I lost at WWE all the contract, and I lost an even bigger dream, and that was going to Japan to wrestle for zero for wrestling. Uh, but after that, I came back, and, and things were going well, and then, then my dad died. who was my biggest supporter. And that's when I started looking at, you know, wrestling and like, you know, should I step back and stop wrestling, start my family, have a child. Um, fast forward, you know, 12, 13 years later, here we are this, this facility with the great wrestling fans and my friend started this company and it's been, been really great. Um, and then one of the founders of this company ended up passing away and that, Kind of opened the doors for me to come back and just to help out and try to perform and to do what I felt I still could do in my heart. And I said, if I'm coming back, I, I want to just work with one person. And you know, it's always a David and Goliath thing. I I handpicked Lou Bruno, who you know as the Metal Man's monster. And if you want the truth, um, we don't really get along <laughs> that well. You look at a guy that size and he's like, come on, man, really? It's not going to work. That uh, be either here or there. And I really thought that I was going to be able to live up to whatever potential I had in my brain to, to make this work. And I, I've been training really, really hard for this. Um, and you know, my neck is loving me, and you know, I was talking to my my fiance and she goes, just get it, just get it. I'm just going to see what's going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the health and wellness field outside of here. All the signs are there. And um, I, I went in Great Hospital, Hospital Special Surgery in, in New York City, and they, they told me, uh, you know, you take one more move, and that could be it. Or the lights could be out. We're good. Uh, And you know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when I was a father, I, I think things would have been different. I would have said, you know, fuck it, no. <laughs> so, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna push on, but um, I, I, got a, I got a daughter and a, and a family and a really successful career to focus on. I'm sorry for rambling, but um, I wanna thank everybody that reached out for calls and text messages. Uh, I want to thank all you guys, really, because there's nothing like getting in here and being hated. <laughs> and uh, you got your wish. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you, uh, thanks guys. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> Okay.
I'm sorry, man. He doesn't like you, but I fucking did, so I had to come out and say something. Man. Uh, this business would be nothing without great antagonists. And the man we're in the ring with right now is one of the best. I love my boss of all the time. This broke my heart, and you know, we just wanted to come out here, man. This is glad to have gone out. I wish this could have gone out, but every moment I have to spend in the ring with you, well, it was a privilege and an honor. Thank you. here certainly earned that title shot next month. Absolutely. Big test of strength between the two of them there on the lockup and the collar elbow. Crowbar and KTB just doing a little do -si do there with the headlock float over into the headlock. Head, headlock again this time from KTB being sent off in the ropes. Big shoulder tackle from KTB to Great move by Crowbar. Sweeping out the leg and it worked for Danielson. I am just killing myself with these references. You need to get with the times. Yeah, but I didn't like that, that Jaden Smith one. It was really, really bad. I figured maybe we were referencing the uh, Cobra Kai series. At least that's a little more recent. Fair point, fair point. Anyway, that's it. You're welcome, by the way. KTB throwing Crowbar almost through the top turnbuckle. My goodness! Here comes KTB! Oh my god! What a somersault! Crowbar almost ended up in two pieces after the that. The big mark. man covered a whole lot of ground there. 
Well, see, that's the thing is KTB uh, just a trust fall headbutt to the gut there. Jesus. One, two. Ryan T just saying a two count there on that one. But KTB, not only does he have the strength and the size, he's got a scary amount of speed. Absolutely. This is, this is a guy who can wrestle various styles here. Don't be fooled by his stocky physique. The man can move. Yeah! Off the top of the buddy home for the big splash off the second turnbuckle. Crowbar oh! now with a kick directly to the ribs, trying to take advantage of the missed opportunity by KTB. Crowbar knows his anatomy. He knows where to make those strikes matter the most. Going for the, the rib cage. Big PK style kicks. Going through Matty Straw. One, two. Just a two count, says referee Ryan T. Oh my! Hey, if you can't close your fist, you can't punch, you can't punch, you can't knock somebody out, you can't knock somebody out, you can't win. Uh, quite the mouthful, but yes. Mouthful right under the chin. Not the first dropped. time I've heard that this month. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll stop. Crowbar now following KTB to the outside. This match, of course, as we said, the winner of this match will be taken on. El Presidente Sanchez for the Wrestling Magic World Heavyweight Championship next month, right here in the Wrestling Magic Kingdom on November 23rd. KTB's face just bouncing off of the steel ring post at ringside. Giving time for Crowbar to collect his thoughts a little bit and figure out what else he's trying to do. We just heard Crowbar say now he wants the ref to count Crowbar, to, uh, sorry, to count KTB out. Doing enough damage on the outside. Nope. KTB gets right back up. It's going to be a little bit more than that to keep the beast down. KTB is one of those freak athletes, but my goodness, the strength of Crowbar there with the suplex from the outside of the ring into the inside of the ring in the dead center. Big time elbow drop directly to the start of KTB and just a two count again. What is going to be able to keep KTB down? I'd be hard pressed to give you an answer there. I mean, the man can take all kinds of punishment. I've seen him in other in other groups. The man can hang with uh -oh. the best uh -oh. of them. Oh. Basement style drop kick from the apron inside the ring, but here comes Crowbar up and over. Big splash from the outside. Two, two and three quarters mark. It doesn't get any closer than that without the bell ringing. If, if Crowbar wants to win this match, he needs to have more offensive flurries like that one, and he needs to be consistent in making them. It's going to take a lot to keep KTB down, and Crowbar needs to manage his stamina and his energy, make every strike and every move count, just like that one. Dropping knee strike jawbreaker, I'm going to say? Something to that effect. Something to that effect. Yeah, that, trying to drive the oxygen out of, his, out, of his, uh, out of his throat, that's another way to keep him grounded. You can't breathe, you can't fight, you can't fight, you can't win. Right. You ain't going to be back here to fight nobody for no championships if you don't win. Well, this crowd seems to be getting behind KTV. He's feeding off that energy as he gets back to his feet. KTV's life's blood is the fans and the energy that they provide him. Here comes KTV. But he gets knocked down from a double chop to the throat from Crowbar. Driving more oxygen out. I, as I've said before, Mark, right here on this table, I am a fan of constant pinfalls. You're going to empty, you're going to deplete that tank, and at one point, KTV not be, might not be able to kick out. Absolutely, it's a great old school method of, of winning a match. Manage it, again, managing your stamina, managing your opponent's stamina, making him exert extra energy for every kick out. KTV is definitely wrestling Crowbar's match right now. This is Crowbar's match to lose at this point. Crowbar now on the receiving end with some insane knife edge chops from KTB. KTB laying those strikes in like he hasn't missed a beat despite Crowbar's offense. No sooner do I say that, do we now switch the corner move here. Crowbar with another one of those devastating jawbreakers, dropping down to the knee and just sent, shooting a pain through the skull of KTB. Oh my goodness. Somebody check the third row for KTB's left nipple. Oh, and just as I say that, KTB starts rolling again with these gigantic clotheslines. Is this his match to win? Big back elbow from Cobra says, Oh, watch out! Rolling power slam! One, two, two and seven eighths.
Gates, it couldn't have been any closer. Mark. Shot to snap. Power slam there on Crowbar, catching him way off guard. Now the tide of this match turns once again. To steal a phrase from a Hall of Famer, the great ones make it look easy. That's exactly what KTV did there. Coming up, trying for a vertical suplex, but Crowbar says no thank you. Oh, up great on power. his shoulders, but KTV says no thank you. And he goes up. One, two, and oh. no way! Crowbar digging deep to kick out of that massive jackhammer move. KTV's gonna try and figure out now how to get, how to keep Crowbar down for three seconds. He's already thrown a jackhammer at him. He's thrown a beautiful rolling uh, power slam, many clotheslines, and I mean, he's gotta be here in the emptying of the well. They also tend to wonder if Crowbar just wants KTV to overexert himself. Talk about managing his stamina and his energy here. Yeah, now Crowbar's got some time to regain himself, and there he goes, getting back to his feet. Crowbar saying no thank you once again on that Irish Open attempt. Going back to the ribs. Trying for a uh, oh, reverse atomic drop. If anybody knows the be, spine, it's Crowbar. There'll be no little beast cubs this winter. Here comes Crowbar. Big Bronco Buster from the legend. There we go. Leg drop to the lower abdomen. Crowbar back to wrestling his style of match, meeting out the punishment little by little. One, two, but not enough. And another pinball to the two count. Now just rubbing the elbows into the face of KTB. Absolutely unbelievable, just the disrespect being shown by Crowbar. Now back to driving the oxygen out of his chest, out of his heart. But I feel like Crowbar needs to follow up here with, another, with some more big physical moves. We've seen KTB numerous times throughout this match. Dig deep. Release an offensive flurry for several minutes. Here he goes again, back to his feet. Big just back and forth battle between these two big men. Both of these men want to take on Pinky Sanchez next month for the Pro Wrestling Magic World title. Up and over goes Crowbar. Dug in the clothesline is KTB. What a drop to hold into the second rope. Will this be Crowbar's Hanging him out to dry on the second rope. Now up on the top rope, just launching him off. Up onto the shoulders goes KTB. Death Valley driver. Is the hit one, two? KTB find, somehow found a way to roll his shoulder up at two and a half. That was that was maybe the latest kick out we've seen out of KTB in this match. I think maybe the offense and the style of Crowbar is starting to add up here. But as we know, KTB can take a lot of punishment. Crowbar's got to stay on top of him as he's doing right now with these strikes and chops. Elbow right under the ear. That could, that could knock somebody clean out. Irish whip reversal into the corner. Up and over goes, but he gets caught. KTB caught him. Death Valley driver of his own. One, two. And somehow, some way, KTB can hold Crowbar down. This might make the match here. He's going to the top rope. Going to the high rank district up. Big time diving headbutt from KTB. One, two. What in the holy hell, Mark? Unbelievable reserves by Crowbar getting down at the last millisecond from that diving headbutt. But how much energy did it take KTB to get to the top rope and hit that headbutt? Was it worth it? He's spending a lot of time here looking to the fans for acknowledgement. Crowbar gets to recover, catch his breath on, on, on the mat. KTB now again ascending the turnbuckle, going into the high rent district. And here he goes. But here comes Crowbar. Oh, wait a second. The referee into the ropes, crotching KTB on the top rope. Referee needs to intervene here. This is ridiculous. The referee did intervene. He hit the ropes. Strikes and kicks from Crowbar. You know, it's it's dirty moves like that that sent WCW down the tubes. I think of a lot of other things that sent WCW down the tubes. Unbelievable! Top rope, Hurricane Rana from Crowbar to KT. 
KTV, but KTV is off. Then he How did he do that? Fireman's carry slam. Moon's oh my god! Second row, beast salt. One, two. KTV is number one contender.
for weeks online. Sean Donovan calling the Meadowlands Monster many, many names that I will not repeat here. And the Meadowlands Monster responding in kind. As you just saw, Zach Amico had plenty to say as well because he, quote, wasn't invited to the promo party. But all time for talk is over as the Pro Wrestling Magic Dark Arts title is up for grabs. Sean Donovan and the Meadowlands Monster. Sean Donovan made this person attacking some uh, physical and personal aspects of the Meadowlands Monster's life. And the draw jockey, as we as you explained, Jimmy, did not stop just there, leading right up to the front of the match. Ooh. Donovan putting on the brakes, but the monster able to keep up a little bit and clothesline Sean Donovan gonna, over the top rope. This is trouble. If you're in the crowd, you better move. These guys have it out for each other, something bad. These dark arts titles matches have a way of moving all over the building. Oh, oh my fucking god! I think I think it may have I think I may have popped an eardrum. Don't they know we're trying to watch our levels over here? <laughs> Two hands across the back from Donovan. Sean Donovan. Head first into the apron, goes to Metal Man's monster, trying to walk out of here with his Dark Arts title. He's been holding on to that title ever so tightly for the last few months. Taking advantage of that no count out rule, yes. these men just brutalize each other on the outside. The Dark Arts title rules are in effect because of the Dark Arts title being up for grabs here. It's possible they fight all the way to the outside and don't come back. We, we might have to revisit that rule. This this match may end up ending up in the swamps of Secaucus by the time this is over. Well, that's unfortunate. My battery won't last that long on my microphone. I don't know how we're going to get there. Donovan is now up on the stage. Near all that stage. This is different. Right there. there we go. Not as confident on the on the stage there, jumping back down to ground level from the side of the old school. Well, uh, as you heard in the introduction, bulking up a little bit for this match, putting on 10 pounds of what he's calling muscle, but I'm calling Waffle House. Well, you know, he spent, he spent plenty of time in these pre-match promos insulting the monster's personal physique here. So to come out and say that he's bulking up for this match, certainly a little dubious. Well, you can cultivate mass all you want, but... Well, I should I should watch what I say. I don't need Donovan holding me up against the wall and throwing me across the arena this way. Head first into the merch table in the back. Both of these men making their way around the room, getting ever so closer to us here. Not where I want to see them, though, to be honest with you. Room to the stomach and across the back. The monster and Sean Donovan. At, oh, I don't know if you see that mark. I don't know if you can see that mark, but the, the monster's mouth is bleeding already in this match. Yeah, this thing got violent real quick. Well, we knew he that, had forearm shots to the face. We knew that wasn't going to take long because of... In the wall! He almost went through the window. It was so close. We, ne we knew going into this match that this was going to be brutal because of all the words that were being thrown around. Donovan saying a lot of things about Meadowlands Monster's family and his girlfriends. Breaking that mop stick across the gut of Sean Donovan, not in the uh, old school way as he is accustomed to. The monster. This is a bit of a mistake here as the monster moving away from Sean Donovan. He might be looking for a weapon, but that gives Donovan a chance to recover on the outside. Absolutely. You don't want to give Sean Donovan really any time to recover. Lord knows. He's got plenty of tricks in his head right now. Absolutely. Well, speaking of, he's bleeding from the forehead, by the way. Head first into the that steel post there on the outside. Not, you're right, Donovan is, is bleeding a little bit from the forehead. Up and over the top rope, the big seven-foot-tall Meadowlands monster making his presence known. Donovan on spaghetti legs as we are reaching the seven minute mark here, I'm sorry, six minute mark of this match. Donovan talked a lot of shit online about how the monster would be able to keep up with him after five minutes, but it looks like the monster 
is faring quite well here in the early going of this match. Oh, you just jinxed it, Jimmy. Not a good we have some offense in on the corner. I do have a habit of doing that, don't I, Mark? Monster, I think, is taking him on a little bit. Monster, although we've seen him do this before, we've seen him play a possum a little bit to draw his opponents in. Up, and oh my goodness, Sean Donovan able to lift up the 300 pound, seven foot tall Netherlands monster for the vertical suplex. He said himself, he walked up. Two count from referee Ryan T. Big ref Ryan. Shots to the stomach from the monster, but Donovan able to elbow the monster to the back of the head. Donovan talking the shit as he normally does at this point in the matchup. From the top, double fist to the head. Monster's trying to shake himself out of it here. Trying to shake the cobwebs loose. Devil's favorite Deacon. On the outside, the mad scientist himself, Zach Amico, trying to wake the monster back up. Stay down! Well, I'd hate to disagree with Donovan again, but for someone to stay down, you'd have to get them down, right? That's right, and that's why he's going to the top rope for a third time. I don't agree with his strategy. Monster caught it! Monster caught it with a big time fucking spine monster! Absolutely unbelievable, Mark. The monster was able to shake the cobwebs loose for long enough to turn out and drill Sean Donovan in the center of the ring with that insane spine buster. You have to give the relative cucumber a lot of credit here, building up just enough strength and agility as Donovan came off the top rope slowly three times, building up into that big spine buster. Oh my, with that big elbow to the clavicle. But nothing doing. Big running splash from the big man. Big boot right under the chin. Big time leg lock. And the monster one, two, two and a half. Says referee Ryan to 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 tea time. The monster bearing quite well as we're approaching nearly ten minutes into this match. Sean Donovan. All his shit talking did very little to nothing so far. Once that blood starts flowing, but now begging the monster to hit him. Mind oh, buster from the Messiah, the old school one, two. Dropping on the, the lower part of his back there. Had a little bit of trouble picking him up, but at least being able to drop him on the lower part of the back, that then makes it harder for the monster to use that power later. Locking up those, those gigantic legs. Getting up under the arm. This is a great follow up move, Jimmy. Great Absolutely. follow up move. Don't you get it out and call your work close! As you hear Zach Amigo willing on his monster to reach the ropes, and he does. He uses that height advantage, those long arms, to reach the ropes. That's his one rope break. That is his one rope break. You are right. If, he, if, if the monster's in trouble again, just like that, he's not going to be able to, to use the rope break. Donovan now, outside of the ring, looking for something. Maybe, I was here fairly early this morning. I didn't see Donovan plant anything. Oh my goodness. That is a door. He is bringing a wooden door into the ring. How do you not see a door, Jimmy? I mean, the ring was already set up. What do you want from me? We have to do our scouting before the show here. Maybe you do. I just say things, okay? Door being set up. In the corner as the monster reaches his feet. Running clothesline into the corner from Donovan as that door sits in the corner. Go see do Donovan stopping just before he hits the, the door. Wait a second. Big choke from the big man. Kick down a little low from my perspective. Big sidewalk slam. One, two. Just two. Wow, and a half. it was close. You can see Zach Amico getting a little worried there on the outside. As his monster has not been able to put the Messiah of the old school away. Surprisingly, the only person in this match not bleeding is Zach Amico. The shit talking continues, but maybe he should have taken a little more time to beat Sean Donovan's face. Knee lift off the ropes. Forearm shot. To the face, roll up, but no. Knee strike. 
He caught him. I think he caught him. The monster was able to catch him. Oh no, he's got him in a choke. Got him in a choke again. Oh, but he gets poked in the eye. Have the power to turn him over and get the pitfall. He's so close. One, two, and almost oh. a new champion. Oh, he's convinced he had him there. He, he just took never would have heard the goddamn end of it. No. That would have been the end of my career here in Magic. I wouldn't have been able to listen to that shit. You better watch it. You were taken out by Tella last night. I had to carry the commentary table you know last that, month. That uh, that little bit of oh wait, knee pad down. That little bit of uh, being thrown around. Makes a man realize, oh my, knee strike to the face. Makes a man realize that uh, life is short. You gotta try and do what you can there. Well, Donovan surprisingly taking his time, not going into the pinfall. Trying to make a point. He talked about the monster's physique earlier on social media, saying he's blown up. Attributing it to the cigarette smoke. Nothing doing though, I mean, what's he got now? Chair now being thrown into the ring. I think one of them might have hit the monster right in the knee as it was coming into the ring. Three chairs now. He's how many? I don't think he's many. done yet. Obviously, Sean Donovan is giving too much of a shit about what the faithful here in the Magic Kingdom think of him. The man loves moms. Apparently. This is getting dangerous for the champion as he as he is just with this chair around the throat of the monster, just rubbing salt in the wound, so to speak, lemon juice in the eyes. He's getting that knee loose. Oh, but the monster caught him in a choke slam! 